Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here. And we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality in a way that is extremely empowering. Speaking of exploring powerful perspectives, I'm super excited to announce the release of my very first book, The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance. If you're ready to alchemize the circumstances in your life so that your abundance expands to an entirely new level in 2021, head over to goldenkey.gift to download the audio or ebook as my gift to you by using the code POSITIVEHEAD. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome, one and all. I'm very grateful that you have joined me today and tuned your beautiful brainwaves into this Positive Head podcast because I really believe and I know that it is so important for us as a collective to focus on the positive, to always see the love in every single moment, because each and every one of us that does this is contributing to the collective acknowledgement and knowing of that fact. And so the more we think about it, focus on the fact that all we are is really love, that's all we came from, and that's all we are, the more this knowing goes out into the collective. And I really believe we need it so much right now. I'm sure you've noticed the extreme polarization in the world. And what is a really beneficial thing for all of us to do, and I believe also that it is a job that many of us came here to do, is to really hold our focus in our hearts, and to always act from that place in our hearts. I know myself that I have had been had to have been reminded a bunch of times actually in the last couple weeks, because when things get stressful, I wind up getting all up in my head, my Aquarius self thinks and thinks and thinks. And, and so I was reminded a few times, get out of your head, get back into your heart, your heart, is the knowing part of you. Your mind confuses you. So if we get back into our hearts where our true knowing is, our truth is there. And it's really easy because we can hear it and feel it when we listen from that place. And the truth, that truth is always within us. We are in a time right now where there's lots of truth being found and a lot of truth being sought. And that's beautiful, right? So, so beautiful. At the same time, what I can see out there in the world is also a lot of confusion because what do you believe? There's so much information and it's all confusing and it's hard to discern what is the actual truth. And I personally don't believe that there really is one little T truth. There are some main universal truths, of course. And then all those little T truths, they're just little details. They're actually little details that don't matter in the long run. In the long run, what matters is the big T truths. The big T truth of all you are is love. That you are in control of your universe, that you create everything through your thoughts, through your belief, through your focus, that you are a light being made of infinite stardust, infinite love, infinite light. Those are ultimate truths. And whatever it is that we believe along the way really doesn't matter as long as we get to that place of understanding that all we are is love and from a focus of being in service to others and not in complete and sole service to ourselves. Because 
that's what we're doing here at this time. We're making this choice. What choice do I make? Am I here living my life in service to the whole, in service to others, in service to to the creator? Or am I here out for me, worrying about what I'm going to get out of it, totally in service to myself? Which choice am I making? We're all making this choice right now. And I see most people making the choice of serving others. And then I see a whole lot of other people just being really confused. I really don't see a ton of people making that decision of complete self-service. That's a tough one to make. And I believe that pretty much all of the people here on this planet have the ability to make that choice in service to others, to move forward in this ascension step that we're all making as a collective. But we're all confused because we've been on this human loop here for quite some time, the spiraling loop that we're on. And, And we get confused and we let our minds take control of us and we forget to get into our heart center. And we get all so concerned with finding the truth and what is actually true and none of it matters. And I came to this conclusion lately, or again, lately, because through the QHHT sessions that I'm doing, what I notice is that when a person a person has a very strong conscious belief system, their higher self will not ever negate that. So they're they're told one thing is true about what they believe. And then the next person is told that what they believe is true. And this happens over and over again. And it got me thinking, well, if that's true, and that's true, and that's true, well, then what is really true? And then I thought, well, none of it, and all of it at the same exact time. Because the truth is whatever you believe it to be. And If none of those little t truths matter in terms of your actual ascension process, in terms of your growth as a spirit, in terms of you being in service to others and really being love-centered, if none of those little t truths matter, then they don't care. Your higher self's not going to tell you otherwise. And I love that. I love that they just say, we don't care what you believe as long as you know that you are are a little creator, that you come from source, that you are an infinite being of light. And that is all you are. One of the things that comes through consistently through all of my sessions, when people see themselves as a light being, the way that they describe themselves is exact every single time. And so they see themselves as pure light. A girl yesterday said, I'm a star. I I look like a star inside. And but this light is contained in a human form, like the outline of a human. But that's all it is. It's light in a human form. And that is all we really are. And when I ask the higher self, why did you show them that aspect of themselves? That's their answer. Because that is who you really are. That is the ultimate truth. Before we continue on with today's episode, I'd like to take a moment to share an exciting new development in my world that can benefit those of you who are ready to get out there and travel. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, at some point you have most likely heard me talk about my personal hero's journey tale regarding the Inc. fastest growing private travel company I co-founded that imploded back in 2015. Well, out of the ashes of that challenging lesson, my brother and I started a new travel company called Hello Vacay, and an exciting new chapter has just unfolded in my travel company saga as Hello Vacay recently secured a huge partnership with the world's largest online travel agency, Priceline. Essentially, due to our past success working with them all those years ago, they have agreed to give us access to their deeply discounted private wholesale booking rates. Our new site, hellovacay.com, is sort of like the Costco for hotel and alternate accommodations because it allows anyone to get access to these wholesale rates, which are up to 50% off the normal booking rates you'll find on all the other major online travel sites. 
The only caveat is that Priceline won't let us display these rates publicly because they are so much lower than even what you would see at Priceline.com. So to offer them, they insisted that we have a paid membership for people to get access to these much lower rates. And since I appreciate all of your ongoing support as I've continued to share the updates on my entrepreneurial journey over the years, I originally announced that we would give you all 50% off the normal membership fee of $79 a year. However, after talking to my brother more about it, I convinced him to give all of you 100% free access for the first year when you go to hellovacay.com and use the code PHFREEYEAR at checkout for the yearly plan. And be sure to choose the yearly plan, not monthly, when you're signing up to get the full free year access. Once you're a member, you'll see that the discounts vary from city to city and season to season. But if you're traveling with any regularity, your savings will easily add up to hundreds or even thousands of dollars a year. I personally saved over $200 in one weekend when I went to Seattle not too long ago. Also, I'm honestly not sure how long my brother will agree to allow me to run this free year offer. So if you plan to travel at all in the coming year, be sure to go to hellovacay.com, spelled H-E-L-L-O-V-A-C-A-Y.com, and use the code PHFREEYEAR to take advantage and get free access to wholesale travel booking rates. Journey well, everyone. And so it doesn't matter what we believe about what's going on in this dimension, on other dimensions with negative entities and positive entities and all of the things that we could possibly put our focus into. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we are always living in our heart centers, coming from this place of love, of compassion, of kindness, and of service to others. Because that is what we are here doing. That's what we're here learning. We are learning the lessons of love, learning how to love each other, learning how to love ourselves, because that is part of serving others. Because when you realize that you and another, there is no separation there, you are one in the same, we all come from the same stuff, we all come from the same source, from the same creator. And so you are me and I am you. There are no other selves here, just like there is no outside outside. It's all you and it's all inside. Everything is you. There is no separation here. And this existence here on earth is not one of complete knowing. It's just not. We're veiled. We came in here veiled so we don't know. So we kind of have to grope around in the dark and figure it out for ourselves so that we can make this choice. This choice is so important. And that's what we're doing. Learning these lessons in order to come to a place of understanding and compassion and love. Because how many of you out there have been through some serious, traumatic things in your life? have had maybe a really tough upbringing, have had parents with addiction issues or siblings with addiction issues, and you've grown up in this really hard environment. What did you learn from that? All of the people that I talk to who have grown up this way, what they have learned is compassion and love and that they want to help those people who have fallen into those paths. And if we weren't presented with those types of things, then how would we learn it? If we were just flying on our unicorn and spewing our rainbows out literally all the time, what would we learn? Because that's all we would know. We would just see it very clearly. That's all we are is an infinite sparkle, right? So we have to veil it off. We have to pre just pretend that we don't know because we really are pretending because we do know. We're just veiled from it. But we are figuring it out because more and more and more this veil is thinning and we have more access to our subconscious, to our higher self, to this information and this knowledge that exists within us at all times. Everything we would ever need to know ever is within us. 
So all the knowing that you ever need, you already have. And if we get really quiet and ask our heart, then we know. And we don't need to know the details. And that's the great part. We get ourselves really caught up in the details. And that is just distraction. None of it matters. The details really don't matter. It's the big point. It's the what's going to matter in 100 years. What's going to matter for me, for myself, because I'm not going to be alive in 100 years. But, or maybe I will. Maybe I'll figure that one out. <laughs> we'll see. But... You know, what's what's it going to be? What's going to matter to me in 20 years, in 30 years, in 50 years is these little trivial things about the materials that I fuss about in my daily life. Is that going to matter to me in 20 years time? No, it certainly won't. Because I look back 20 years ago and those materials that I fussed over then, I couldn't even tell you what that was. No recollection whatsoever, because it doesn't matter. So if it doesn't matter in 20 years, then it shouldn't matter now. It's irrelevant. It's the big things that matter. What I remember from 20 years ago are those moments, those moments where I shared laughter and love and communication, and even the hard times, because we helped one another get through that. And that's what's important. And what's even more important is when we die in this lifetime and we go to the other side and we take a really good look at our lives and what we have learned and the lessons and the love, all of it. That's what's important. When we look back at our lives and we do our judgment by ourselves and we judge ourselves, those moments are what is important. How we behaved, how we stood up for one another, how we loved one another. Those are the only things that matter to our soul's involvement. And so as I was talking about this, speaking of family and things that are so important to us and the most important things, my little one walked in here and interrupted me. And so I had to take a little break. But what happened during that break, he started messing around with my bookcase and pulling books off the shelf. And so I was standing there in front of it, and Dolores Cannon's book, Jesus and the Essenes, just started screaming to me, like, pull me out, pull me out. There's a quote in here you might want to use. And so I opened the book to chapter 22, which is called Jesus's Travels and Mary. And I have a little tab here that says love and thought. And so I started reading, and it's exactly what I've been talking about today. And so I'm going to read just from the first couple pages of this chapter, and it starts off with them going into a scene where Jesus was back in the Essene community after he had left and he was traveling around, and Dolores was questioning if he had learned everything he needed to learn from them, then why did he have to come back and take lessons again? And Sudi is the the name of the person who... It's the actual person's name in the past life um, that she was talking to. And so Sudi says, this is true. He does not have to. It is actually not so much teaching as it is discussing questions and talking about things. For several years he left and was on travels and has returned again. He desires instruction in certain questions that he has brought to us. There are questions as far as some of the prophecies as to what their meanings are also some of the interpretations. There are many laws which are very open to interpretation, and we are looking at different viewpoints of these things, like taking it one way and then looking at it and deciding if it could also be taken some other way, and what the ramifications of doing this would be. This is good. You're teaching him to think for himself? And to question of things, yes. To never take something at face value. He said that in his travels, he noticed that many of the teachers speak in ways that the people do not understand. He is concerned about this. He thinks there must be a way to speak to them so that they will know of what you speak. By comparing the knowledge to things that they know and see about them in their day-to-day lives and in this way, perhaps they will understand the message. He watches nature and sees lessons in the simplest things, things that I could never see. She asked for an example. 
There is a plant that grows and increases in a strange way. The way it grows, it will shoot up a single plant from the roots, and other plants can come up from the roots. And then the branches that grow up will bend over and out, and when they contact the ground again, put down roots and start new, start a new offspring plant. He said this was a good example of a man's cycle of lives, that the plant putting up new plants from the roots was like a man going through rebirths, and the branches tipping over and making new plants, that way would be the man's family and his children descending that way while he comes back for new lives and starts new families. He uses circles in many of his examples of this. He used another plant as an example. A plant that is composed of many layers, similar to an onion. He said this would show the different planes of existence. He pointed out that at the very center of the plant, the layers are very thin and close together. If one could consider each layer as a different plane, one can see that at the center, where it is the smallest and most limited, that is like the physical world. As one travels upward and outward in the planes, one's horizon of understanding would expand each time, and you would see and understand more. Another example, he came by from watching the water. He pointed out how a wave could come in from the sea and land up on the shore and pick up a bit of debris. And when this bit of debris is put back down, it's almost at the same place that it was before, but moved over slightly. And so, the piece of debris will gradually travel down the shore, being picked up and placed back down by the waves. He said that this is like your cycle of lives. You go through your cycle of life, starting at one point, and then, when you die, it's like being picked up by the wave and then redeposited in a life. Your spirit is redeposited, and it's a little bit further along the way of where you're meaning to go. That would make sense. It would also show how slowly it happens. Yes, it's a very slow process, and one must have much patience and work on it diligently. It seemed as though Jesus was beginning to develop his concept of parables. I wonder if some of these were still too complicated for the average person of his day to understand. These are not mentioned in the Bible, most likely because of their reference to reincarnation, which the early church strongly objected to. The parables that are included in the Bible show that he continued to simplify his teachings and often use things in nature as a reference. Does he tend to stick to the letter of the law, or is he rather broad in his interpretation? He is broad in his interpretation in that he feels that love is the only law that one must abide by solely, and after that all the others pale into insignificance. We did not teach him this. He came by this conclusion through inner, what do I say, discussions with his soul and deciding how he feels about certain things. Love cannot be taught. It is something that must grow. And again, I am not explaining myself very clearly. The only restrictions he spoke of were those concerning harming other human beings and other living beings. To not physically harm other living beings and to try to not mentally harm them either. He knows the power that thought has. If you think something strong enough, the vibrations sent out will cause it to come to pass, and he is aware of this. It is important to not think evil in your heart. And that is where I will end on this chapter because it just sums up very well, I think, and adds in a little extra of what I was just talking about today. And you know what's funny? When I turned on the mic today, I really didn't have much planned in my head of what I was going to say. I just, I wanted to talk about our truth. And so I just decided to sit down and see whatever came out of my mouth. And here we have it. And I wanted to give a big shout out of gratitude to my guidance and myself for listening to my inner guidance and picking up this book and finding this really fun synchronicity because obviously this was the message that wanted to come out today. So I appreciate you all so much for being here and tuning in your beautiful hearts today. I'm going to leave you with a song. This is Sat Song, This Place, featuring Trevor Hall. Until next time, I love you all. 
Also, before we queue up today's song, as a quick reminder, don't forget to download the Golden Key audio or ebook as my free gift to you at goldenkey.gift using the Golden Key code POSITIVEHEAD. And please, if you enjoy my gift, leave a positive review on Amazon so others can unlock their lives with the help of the Golden Key as well. Past the place we think we're from and past the edge of the earth Now we have come to call it back and I've known this since my birth That we are not from here Visitors to this place but we all go back home Now intertwined and locked in time and at times it takes the load We've met ourselves before Take me to this place I want to know more than I know right now Set me free from pace We'll get there when our bodies could end up And all our songs are so From the depths of the earth we crawl From the depths of the earth we crawl To the place that we're from before our birth To the place that we're from before our birth From the depths of the earth we crawl From the depths of the earth we crawl To the place that we're from before our birth We send our soul Take me to this place Take me to this place I wanna know more than I know right now Send me from pace We'll get there when our bodies could end up And all our songs are sung Take me to this place 